Rainbow Algebra students, we are going to be moving into a new chapter soon. But <clears throat> before we do that, I want to make sure that everyone is very comfortable with graphing lines. We've been writing equations of lines. We graphed before that, but what we're going to be doing in the next chapter, we're going to have to be able to graph very well, and we need to be able to get slope-intercept form. So we're going to review that. Remember, if you have slope-intercept form, it's going to look like this. Y equals mx plus b. Remember, the b is the y-intercept. That's where you begin on the y-axis. The m is your slope. That's how you move to get to the next point. So in number one, if I do a keep change, change right there, I can see my y-intercept is negative 2, so I'm starting at negative 2 on the y-axis. A negative one-third slope, remember that means it has to move downhill. So from this point, I'm going to go down 1 over 3, put a point. Or I can go positive 1, which is up, and left 3, which is negative. And then you get your line. For number 2, this is starting at positive 5. My slope looks just like a 2, but I need it to be a fraction, so 2 over 1. Problem is, I don't have room to go up 2 and over 1. So I would have to go negative 2 and negative 1. These two negatives don't make a positive. And this does look like a positive slope. So there's my line. In these two problems, I don't have slope-intercept form. But number 3 is very close. I would just need to subtract this 2x to get the y by itself. So I'm going to have that y equals negative 2x plus... Sorry, I keep hitting bells. Negative 2x plus 2, which means I'm going to start at positive 2 on the y-axis, and my slope is a negative 2 over 1 this time. So it's got to go downhill, down 2 over 1 or up to and left one. I'm hoping you guys are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that Mrs. Kempy's making us do this again because we know this so well. That's my hope. In number four, I've got a little bit more work to do. Let me rewrite that problem over here. 3x plus 4y equals 4. I would start by moving my 3x. So 4y equals negative 3x plus 4. Remember, we like to have that x part First, so it looks like slope-intercept form. Then we're going to divide by 4, but everything divides by 4. Divide by 4, divide by 4, divide by 4. So I have y equals negative 3 fourths x. And then 4 divided by 4 is 1. So my y-intercept is 1. And my slope is a negative 3 fourths, which means down 3 and over 4. So I go negative. Or up 3 and left 4. There's my line. On these last two, remember you're still trying to get the y by itself. For number five, I hope that you remember I did show a trick once. When I have everything all on one side and it's equal to zero, sometimes instead of moving the 2x and moving the 8, it might be faster to just move the 4y. You don't have to do this problem this way, but it does work. So I would have, I'm going to put the negative 4y first. Negative 4y equals negative 2x minus 8. And then I'm going to divide everything by negative 4. Divide, divide, divide. y equals negative over negative is a positive, 1 half x. Negative 8 over negative 4 is positive 2. So it starts at 2. My slope is a positive 1 half, which means up 1 over 2. Or down 1 and left 2. All right, last problem. The y is almost by itself. I just have to get rid of this negative 6. So everybody's going to get divided by negative 6. It's not all in the right order for what I'd like, but I'll have y equals. Let's take care of this part first because that's the part that has the x. Negative 3 over negative 6 is going to be a positive 1 half. There's my x. And then 24 divided by negative 6 is negative 4. So they have the same slope as the last problem, which means these two lines will be parallel. We're going to start at negative 4, and I'm going to have a 1 half slope here. Today's worksheet is going to be getting slope intercept form and graphing lines. It should be a nice, easy review. I hope everyone feels comfortable with this, but if you need any help, let me know.